Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Debate IA program and I am your host Tahir Khan. Uh, we are today will explore and analyze the current uh, relationship between China and United States of America, uh, India and United States of America strategic alliance, India, US, China trilateral relationship uh, as well as Pakistan, China relationship uh, and uh, what are the perspectives and what, are, what is the role of these uh, major countries uh, in Afghanistan, what is the role of Pakistan as well as China and what will be the impact of India-US uh, relationship uh, on Pakistan-China relationship and what is the role of Pakistan uh, in maintaining Pakistan, um, in maintaining uh, United States of America and China's relationship. Uh, so today we will discuss the role of major powers, uh, power politics of uh, major powers and uh, Pakistan's role. Uh, Today, uh, Dr. Seema has joined us from Australia. You are Senior Analyst on National Relations. Uh, Dr. Seema, thank you so much uh, uh, for your time and you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tariq. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, Dr. Seema, how uh, would you analyze the current relationship of China and United States of America and do you see any difference of um, uh, Soviet Union as well as United States of America's rivalry in case of China's uh, relationship between China and uh, United States of America? How would you analyze this whole scenario? Well, actually, it is a power game. Uh, for sure, we can relate it with the um, Russia, like the Cold War era. It's currently not a Cold War era with uh, Joe Biden in his, like in the recent summit for democracy, he categorically said that it's not going to be a uh, Cold War era, but it is, we are heading towards that era when the, the world is going to be divided into two blocks, uh, a Chinese block and then a American block. Although my analysis in this case, um, uh, it's not that I'm pro-China, but uh, I would rather uh, go for Chinese policies. Uh, because uh, in, in in the recent history or since we are analyzing the facts and the, whatever is happening around, uh, we have seen that America has tried to, uh, I would use this word hegemonize the world affairs, but still uh, we didn't find any peace. We didn't find any development which uh, America has uh, actually promised, be it the case of Iraq, be it the case of Afghanistan, be it case of Syria or anywhere else. Um, although Germany has progressed, Japan has progressed with American aid after the World War II, but it was again for its own street, strategic interest. But other countries will just take uh, just focus an example of Afghanistan, where America invested trillions, like so much money there, but in the war zone and for the war affairs. So when we come to China, China has invested heavily, uh, like uh, uh, if we can say r safely around the world, uh, be it Britain, be it Pakistan, be it uh, Far East Asia, be it uh, Middle East or Africa, um, um, uh, China has invested heavily, but without any conflict, without any war. Although so many areas where China has invested does have their uh, inherent uh, conflictual conflicts and inherent uh, issues. But uh, it's not that um, China has produced them or China has created them. It was there and China has come there. For example, if you take the example of Gawada board. So when you, if I'm coming back to your question, how do I analyze it? If it is a U.S.-China rivalry or it is going to, if it is uh, similar to what has happened during uh, uh, U.S.-Soviet uh, era, the Cold War era, uh, it was then bipolar world like it was clearly divided in two you can say two poles it was one is the soviet and the other was uh, american the uh, the capitalistic economy and the communist economy but now this is not the case um, uh, world is heading towards multipolarity and uh, the power centers are not focused only with america or with china or just with america or china uh, there is eu um, there is India, uh, there is Far East, there is Asia, some sector of sectors of Asia, there is Africa. So I mean, it's everywhere. Although these are very short blocks, like not, not uh, small blocks, but still, uh, it's a multipolar world where Brazil is there, 
um, in, before during the cold war era we didn't hear about g20 or g7 uh, you know groups but now we, we do have these kind of groups so in my analysis is it's uh, power uh, the american fear is to lose the power which is going away towards asia um, mostly towards china and then uh, the next competitor is india and russia of course uh, i would rate uh, be very honest uh, i would rate india more than russia uh, not because uh, russia has not too much you can say economic edge but because uh, when we see in research in academia we see english speaking thing um, the research article even if you rank university ranking if you go for the university ranking the articles which are being published in english are ranked or uh, in english universities in english standards the english standards where i'm saying english it means the western standards whereas the same research or same article or same concept if it is written in urdu or in chinese or in russian that does not have or does not on that you know that uh, qualification which uh, something is written for western journal so similarly because um, if we compare the population again the population for uh, india is almost 1 billion plus so yeah i mean i would pray it it's coming towards asia and the main contenders again are china and then india and then obviously russia russia is the largest i mean not largest i mean one of the largest arm producing country but when it comes to uh, skill skillful labor when it comes to investment when it comes to population or in speaking thing or assimilation with the western democracies uh, regardless we accept it or not but india has uh, identified itself as one of the democratic countries and then its uh, its uh, alliance with the western democracies and the, its uh, close relationship with america now uh, so yeah it's it's not a bipolar world it's for me it's going to be as i see is a multipolar world and uh, america is obviously very uh, disturbed in losing that its unipolarity which uh, it has earned since 1989 when after the disintegration of soviet union dr seema how do you uh, view uh, india us uh, strategic alliance and its impact on china pakistan relationship how would you analyze india us alliance has one very you can say solid objective is to contain china i mean there is no other reason that uh, suddenly america has developed a, like a, a love relationship with india which was never uh, uh, part of uh, you know american group it was pakistan which was always uh, tilted towards america tilted towards american policies uh, although america, uh, pakistan has established its uh, uh, relationship with china but then its tilt uh, that uh, our rulers tilt towards america was very much obvious and then uh, um, an ally in the war on terror and then frontline ally so that was one of the evidences Uh, but when it comes to now the current situation i i still remember i was a student of masters in 2007 and then um in we had this case study uh, in which we were being asked to predict or forecast uh, the two nations china and india which is going to be like uh, uh, going to you can say uh surpass the whatever the level at that time of uh, at that point of time 2007 that which one is going to be uh, the next power you know, regional power whether it would be china or india and everybody was here in australia was uh, going for india because uh, uh, the reason they said when I, in my previous question i also said that the english speaking thing there the reason they said that it's a democracy it's the uh, uh, largest population other than the english pe- english speaking countries they have the english speaking people population so yeah they always said this uh, but now it's nothing else but to contain china uh, and secondly uh, america is losing its uh, you can say uh, unipolar unipolar your supreme position which it wants to retain at any cost and in this region in this particular region where china does exist in, uh 
one thing or one state which can you can say challenge the supremacy of uh, regional supremacy of china is india although i don't see india coming closer to china in next 30 40 years at least because china has gone too far like um all the predictions all the calculations for china was till 2030 and we are still 9 years behind uh, as of now 9 years behind 2030 but china has already reached certain points certain you can say uh, has crossed certain limits uh, in terms of its progress in terms of its development and in terms of its uh, economic indicators so um, china has crossed that and uh, america is losing it very quickly so the new deal of august new deal of quad and all this uh, summit for democracy and uh, turning blind eye towards whatever is happening in india right now i mean like uh, all these uh, re- re- religious you can say mobs against minorities especially muslims and christians I mean, when on one hand america is uh, claiming to be a th- champion of human rights and claiming to be uh, the savior of the world on the other hand turning a blind eye towards what is happening in kashmir what is happening in india and other parts of the india bihar and like in nagaland and all these areas where the minorities exist and they have like they don't have any right they do not have the state status of a citizen but when it comes to china they always talk about uh, you were muslims and then there been to be very honest i have no idea like as a researcher i tried to figure out what is happening there there must be some issue i am not saying that there is no issue at all but i am yet to see a solid evidence because uh, we have seen in case of iraq when america uh, propagated war weapons of mass destruction in, in we have seen in case of afghanistan when they came here to uh, you know to uh, to fight a war to wage a war. they waged a war against terrorism but terrorism still there rather it has transformed into more crude or form so i do not trust american version i do not trust american statements what they are saying in china um, having said this i am not saying that there is nothing happening there because i have no clue what is happening if there is something because there is no solid evidence uh and there is no solid denial also from china uh when it comes to pakistan the position of pakistan in this whole scenario is very sensitive like pakistan cannot cut off its relationship with america pakistan cannot cut off its relationship with china uh dr sima uh, uh, could you explain in more details that what uh, concerns do you view by india and united states of america regarding china pakistan relationship actually to uh, pakistan if uh, if i am if i have to see it as uh, an international observer pakistan itself does not stand in that in that spectrum as a sole entity but when it comes with china and when china is entering through pakistan then pakistan does exist and pakistan comes in gavadar port is the point i mean it's not the cpec it's not the bri uh, as a whole which is affecting pakistan us india and china relationship it's the gavadar port the uh, bone of contention or you can say the point where the whole thing is uh, criti- being criticized or where where it is the issue is uh, emerging and keep on like they are keep on raising this issue is gavadar port because gavadar if you have this uh, uh just uh, imagine the map of uh, that area the gawadar port it is very much it's closest to uh, strait of hormuz and it is in opening in an indian ocean so if in case uh, in case there is some problem in the south china sea and there is any blockage which the chinese expert has referred to as balakha dilemma which which never happened but it was been perceived if it happen if it does happen then what would be the second option gawadar is the best option for them gawadar is the best option for them and having two eyes in the indian ocean which india claims to be indian you know india claims indian ocean to be in the indian ocean not anybody else ocean 
but having two eyes on the east and on the west by Chinese in that region. It means the having an eye on the, the entire maritime traffic, which is going from west to east or east to west. So strategically, the location or the situation of the water port, which is actually disturbing um, the whole equation. And that's why Pakistan is is like something which is, uh, what, what, what shall I say, it's a point of contention. Itself, Pakistan, is not an issue for, it cannot be an issue for China, for uh, India or for USA. What can Pakistan do? Pakistan is economically very weak country. Pakistan is still struggling for political instability. Pakistan does not have any much like, doesn't, we do not have too much export. I'm just saying this, whatever I'm saying is not saying as a Pakistani. For me as a Pakistani, Pakistan is the greatest country. But when I'm saying as an IR observer, what I, this Pakistan itself itself does not have that importance, but when it is allied with China, then it gains all the importance, and especially when it is nuclear, because the nuclear program could have been contained or curtailed by any kind of sanctions, by any kind of thing, if there was no China in the UN, if there was no China to veto, veto any such kind of thing. So that's China is the savior and being aligned or being allied with or being a companion, being friend with China is, or is going to be beneficial for Pakistan. Uh, what two fat of uh, sanctions uh, through other sanctions, uh, not uh, giving any, you can say, benefit or any trade, any beneficial trade to Pakistan. USA is trying to squeeze, US and Western democracies, all Western democracies are trying to squeeze Pakistan to a point that Pakistan would like, okay, we have no other option but to do this. And to do this what? I mean to uh, uh, get away from China, which is not possible, which should not be the situation, which should not be done. If anyone uh, is going to go into American camp now, it would be a disaster. Because America has never, has never ever favored Pakistan, be it a war of 1965 or 71, or it was uh, 1989 when they left from here. They just left us, they left all these trained Mujahideen on the borders, within, within the borders. And Pakistan is still struggling with that radicalization and with that extremism. Uh, all the Mujahids which were being taught according to the syllabus in which was being designed in University of Nebraska and the funds coming from IS, CIA and from Saudi Arabia and from UAE. I mean, they poured everything here. Pakistan was being used as a guinea pig, as a laboratory, and then we are here to confront all these issues. And same has happened now in 2021 after 15th August. And they have abandoned the funds. They have left them with with no money, with no funds, and Pakistan is tackling that issue. Pressurizing Pakistan is not actually uh, pressurizing Pakistan, but pressurizing Pakistan is actually to bend Pakistan on knees so that Pakistan come and, uh, and join hands with America. The real issue is to contain China because America, like any power, like any powerful player in any game, and it's an international game, does not want to lose its supremacy. But um, every rise has a fall. America is losing it. Sooner or later, America has to realize this. Instead of going for a confrontation, um, people like me, uh, we would rather go for cooperation and collaboration. Uh, Dr. Seema, how would you conclude Pakistan's role and stance uh, in maintaining the U.S.-China relationship as well as uh, the role and perspectives of China, India, United States of America and Pakistan on Afghanistan current situation? How would you analyze and conclude? Honestly speaking, Pakistan, uh, like since I was born and since I'm studying Pakistan studies and all these affairs, uh, Pakistan have been passing through the difficult timings, but this is uh, one of the most difficult timings right now. Honestly speaking, Pakistan is left with very limited choices, like, and it has to play very smartly. 
Uh, Pakistan lies at a position where it can actually gain maximum or it can lose everything. Um, we should not be like totally dependent upon China, I mean, although China is all weather's friend. But we should not, and on the same, uh, like on the contrary, we should not say goodbye to America also. Uh, a balanced approach is uh, essential here, but uh, not tilting towards America is the best option as as I see. I mean, like, I mean, I do not want to say goodbye to America, but I want to have a very balanced and uh, an equal stand and status relationship. It should not be a donor recipient relationship. It's a it's a relationship which two to any two states can have. Uh, it should not be transactional one. It has to be like uh, on basic on the basis of some uh, trade and some uh, you know uh, it has to be uh, in on a similar line what we have with China. Although China is investing heavily with uh, in Pakistan, still we we as Pakistani we have never felt that China is a, is a master here. China always come as a negotiator. China always come as a, a party to one of the, you know, a party to one agreement. Uh, we negotiate, we criticize as Pakistani. China comes to the table and then renegotiate the thing. And regardless, it was a case of orange train. Regardless, it was the case of Saival uh, uh, coal uh, power plant and all these many projects which are under CPEC, which are covered being under CPEC. Uh, be they uh, the energy product uh, projects or the infrastructure projects, whatever has happened, if there was a criticism within the country and the uh, internal politics uh, were uh, like uh, having some impact on that, China always came back with certain another negotiation, like another, you can say condition or another not condition in terms that uh, we have to be in a way that we have to bend our knees. We do, We were not in, uh, you can say, surrendering position. But when it comes to America, the famous dialogue, we all remember uh, that uh, Pakistan would be turned into a stone age. You know, that stone age thing is still haunting us, all of us. And America could have done it, uh, could have actually done it, could have bombed us. Uh, America does not, I mean, I have seen, I'm, I'm sorry to say it's a very, uh, it can be a, Big statement to say that, but America does not shy away in bombing the countries. It has done it. I, I, I was in Kuwait when during this Iraq war, that invasion thing in 1990s, and I have seen Iraq so many times. I've been to Iraq. Although after 11 years of war between Iran and Iraq, the infrastructure of Iraq was not that bad. It was good. The roads were there intact, like big roads were there. But after an entrance of entry of the of America with all allied forces finding the weapons of mass destruction, America has actually lost its credibility. That's the thing that, in a nutshell, I should say this: uh, when it comes to China, China has not lost its credibility. China has not taken uh, like has not entered in any country as a warrior. It has always, it has, like we can see the track, whether it's Africa, it's Bangladesh, it's Sri Lanka, it's Pakistan. It has gone there with some investment. An investment in some projects, which are obviously, if somebody is giving you some money, definitely will be asking for some benefits, some advantage there. And it, these are all strategic positions where um, uh, China can have strategic position, strategic expansionism. I'm not saying that China is doing it as a, a charity work. No, China is not doing it as a charity work. China, since China has attained a certain point where China has, uh, you can say, whatever amount of reserves they have, which is sufficient enough for their economy to go for certain certain amount of countries, certain number of uh, certain number of years in in the long term, uh, so that now. The second goal is to assert its power. As China has asserted its power economically, now as China is trying to assert its power strategically, but in a in a better way. You know, I, I could say in a better way, which is beneficial to the other the recipient country also. So China's approach is more uh, collaborative and cooperative as compared to America, which is more authoritative and more hegemonic, where America wants to have all the rights 
uh, if we go with the American version of democracy, then it's democracy. If we go with other kind of democracy, which is which may not be uh, good for American uh, standards, but it is good for our country, then it is not democracy. So America is more authoritative. It's a new imperialist uh, is scheme of things which America is bringing into the world affairs since long. But now it's a uh, it's a time. It's 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 uh, America sh should realize it that. Uh, it's not uh, 1980s uh, when they came here and then they devastated the whole the whole area. Although Pakistan is now in such a critical position, coming back to your question about Afghanistan, it's a very tricky situation. Uh, I mean, I fear uh, that all uh, people, Afghan people, and the and, and the security forces which have which has lost their uh, jobs after uh, the U.S. withdrawal from their this um, the, um, the, the salary they are not being paid. The uh, Taliban government, which is yet to be recognized by any any state, they are not recognized as uh, you can say government. They are recognized as the caretaker of Afghanistan right now. Even Pakistan has not recognized their government yet. So, and they are struggling. They are seriously struggling with uh, funds issue. I fear, considering that the, the presence of ISIS there, the Islamic State of Khorasan chapter, that people will start moving towards them. What has happened here in Pakistan, in our northern areas, when the uh, government of Pakistan banned Lashkar-e Jhangvi and all these proscribed organizations, their foot soldier went and joined hands with ISIS or with TTP because they were giving them money. So poverty is is not the issue of terrorism. It is not the only reasons for spreading of terrorism, but actually, it is like it, it provides a conducive environment which push the people towards terrorism because end of the day against one bullet if you are getting fifty dollars or hundred dollars that's not a bad deal for a person who has like a large family to feed so pakistan on the border having the longest border with afghanistan and we have seen in, because my study, my thesis was on Balochistan, so whatever i have studied what i have whatever i has have researched there uh, everything uh, and anything was coming through Balochistan or uh, through Afghanistan border. So it's very tricky. Pakistan has to play its uh, cards, like choose its cards, actually, not play, choose its cards very smartly, which should not be putting all the eggs in one basket. Um, and then the financial crunch. Uh, we ourselves are struggling with uh, the, you know, with the funds we do not have we do not have enough reserves every day is a day when we say okay if this day has passed okay the next day we can start a new day our industry is not booming which is to the extent which it should be which it should have textile industry is having showing some positive indicators uh, but then textile is not going to hit the button which can take uh, us out of the dead trap what we have right now, the circular. We have like so many problems at home. Internal problems are larger than external problems. And the problem is that external and internal problems are so intertwined. So whatever, whatever is happening externally is uh, having a serious impact on internal politics. And whatever is, whatever is happening in internally, it has uh, serious connections with external power. So, Pakistan is in a serious situation. Although Afghanistan is an area where the war was being fought, Afghanistan is an area where the U.S. With, uh, forces and allied forces have withdrawn. But anything happened in Afghanistan is going to impact Pakistan. China is trying its best to find its way, but China is very cautious in its approach. Where even in Afghanistan, China is not pouring its money there. Because recognizing Taliban is an issue and not recognizing Taliban is another issue. Um, 
Taliban are still uh, have still uh, like uh, not able to convince the international audience, including Pakistan, that they are actually going for an inclusive government. Uh, yesterday, I read in the newspaper that they have issued some uh, kind of orders that uh, beyond certain uh, radius, a woman cannot go without the mehram. So this, for me, this is not an issue because I live in Pakistan. I, I belong to Pakistan and we, the people living in Pakistan, it might not be an issue. Uh, but this is an issue which is being highlighted uh, as uh, something curbing the liberty uh, of females in Afghanistan. And that issue is uh, sufficient enough to bar or put, um, or you can say, you can say impose sanctions on Afghanistan. And if there are more sanctions, and Afghanistan is already a sanctioned country, so if there are more uh, sanctions on Pakistan and that nobody is going to release the fund, it means the whole pressure is going to come on Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan uh, it was if, for example, another 10 or you can say 1 million uh, refugees, if they come to Pakistan, what will happen to Pakistan? Pakistan is still struggling with the previous uh, lot of Afghan refugees. And Oh, so may I'm not saying that they have brought it was our policy makers who like kept their eyes closed or shut for their own interest uh, whatever has happened in past but we are still struggling we are still struggling we are still struggling I'm saying it again and again uh, Dr. Sima thank you so much for your time and valuable precious analysis on the topic uh, viewers, thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, see you in the next episode. Till then, take care. Allah Hafiz.